the book I have to share with you today is Samuel T. Moore of Port Magor by Tanya Allen Gould, who happens to be the Young Authors Conference presenter this year. So let's take a look at her book. Samuel T. Moore of Port Magor. None have told this tale before of poor old Samuel T. Moore, the fiddler crabbed that crawled his way onto shore of sandy white beach called Port Magor. When Samuel took a beady-eyed look around, he knew he had finally, finally found a place where he could spend his days beneath the sun and ocean's haze. Here is where I want to settle down, he said. He staked his bow into the ground. Oh yes, this is where I want to be, the old crab said with a crabby glee. But Sam needed shelter at long last, before the tides came and strong and fast, before the tides would carry him away back out to sea and north of the bay. His friends, the hermits, had all their own huts, made from cracked open half shells of the coconut. A coconut shell is fine, this is true, but for a fiddler crab, it just wouldn't do. Sam needed some place of his own to belong, a place to burrow and fiddle all day long, a home that wouldn't stand perfect, strong, and true when the tides rolled in or the wind simply blew. Yes, Sam would be ready and waiting at least because he was a fighter and the sea was his beast. So he set out to work, and there was work to get done. He had to be finished by quarter to one. By quarter to one, the tides would roll in, and Sam, the crab, wasn't in the mood to swim. So he built a new home of driftwood and stick, not like my house or yours of martyr and brick. The sticks, he tied them in a teepee fashion. Sam thought his new home was a mansion. The holes were patched with seaweed and kelp. He built himself, never asking for help. The sand was his yard, and there were lots of it, lots of it. He imagined he'd stay there and play there or just fiddle and sit. Just for it, as he finished building his new home, his claws were wet and dripping with foam. When the first of the waves, waves rolled up to his door, poor Sam had to use his fiddle as an oar. He had to move quickly. There was no time to think. If he didn't do something, his home would soon sink. Already the water was deep and rising quite fast. Sam couldn't help but notice a hermit drifting past. What if he dug a moat around his new home? Would the water fill it and leave him alone? So he dug and he dug with his giant crab claw, stopping suddenly at what he suddenly saw. For what he saw coming made him quite sad, especially after working as hard as he had. The water still oozed over the top of his trench and trickled right up to the foot of his bench. Sam's home toppled over and drifted away, and to his dismay, he was floating alone on top of the bay. On top of the bay, Sam drifted and cried and worried about the next coming tide. By this time, he was tired and fell fast asleep, dreaming of the water, which surely would creep. Right up to his house, he'd been trying to save, in the mouth of the sea and the great tidal wave. Drifting and dreaming, Sam dropped with a thud. He was wading in murk, dripping with mud. By now, Samuel was stark, raving mad. He was no longer crying, no longer sad. He decided that moment, right then and right there, to build a great dam for the water to snare. So he set out to work. There was work to get done. He had to be finished by quarter to one. When the tides came back, he was ready at least. Yes, Sam was a fighter, and the sea was his beast. The first thing he did was collect more sticks. He stacked them and tied them and patched them real quick. Then he set out to find some very big stones. He carried them each to the throne of his home. He heaved and he hoed and he dragged them along. Complaining no more, he was singing a song. He worked very hard and built up a sweat from searching the shore every rock he could get. In the end, he made 232 trips while carrying his load on his back and his hips. For the sake of his home, he was trying to save before it was ruined by the great tidal wave. One rock at a time, he stacked those great big rocks while seagulls soared above mocking and flocks. One rock at a time, he formed a great wall 
When he was finished, it scaled ten feet tall. Just as Sam stopped and admired the art of his work, the gulls began shouting. The hermits went berserk. They all pointed to the sea and the monstrous wave that threatened the hut Sam was trying to save. Sam had been so proud of his newly built dam, he didn't notice until the crash and the bam. The wave inched closer. It was talking. Was it saying, Sam? The clouds grew dark and loud thunder clapped. If the water got over, they'd all be trapped. The wave rose and licked the top of the rocks. The smart seagull soared higher in their flocks. But then, just then, the noise went away. The wave, defeated, oozed back out to the bay. Yeah, Sam couldn't believe what his eyes were seeing. The waves were leaving, possibly fleeing. He did it. He did it. Sam saved his new home. Finally, a place that he could call his own. So Sam leaned back and yawned a big yawn and fiddled the tune that night until dawn. From his porch on the sand of the shore of the sandy beach, white beach called Port Magor, none have told this tale before. The end. Sam was sure persistent, wasn't he?